As I've been trying out several crater sensitivities, such as its Timmy's, Asus, or even Imperial Health, I've been seeing an increasing number of comments realizing that their sensitivities may not be as optimal as they had initially thought. To this day, I'm receiving countless requests per day asking me how do I find my own sensitivity, what DPI should I have, so I figured I'd share exactly how to find your sensitivity in Apex Legends. There are two types of aim. There's wrist aim and there's arm aim. Whether you're using wrist aim or arm aim depends on where your hand connects to the mouse pad. A lower hand placement forces you to use your wrist with less range of motion and a higher placement allows you to unlock your whole arm for higher range of motion and thus precision and consistency. Wrist aim is obviously more inconsistent, it's prone to shakes and jitters and it can lead to gaming or career ending health issues down the line. It's not uncommon for pro players to develop wrist injuries such as RSI or carpal tunnel through repeated strain from very high sensitivities. Personally, my aim uses the triceps for super wide movements, my wrist and even individual fingers for super fine movements, and the forearm for everything in between. Very early in my gaming career, I played on a small mouse pad with a terrible mouse and I had a high sensitivity just to account for that. But as I got more serious and I got into Counter-Strike, I learned that the precision wasn't there. And the implications of developing wrist injuries such as an RSI simply from using your wrist too much turned me away from those sensitivities. I also believe that a high sensitivity is a cause for a lot of bad players out there as every client I've coached has been on an incredibly high sensitivity and instantly saw results after slashing it in half. But what is the norm for sensitivities? In Aimer 7's aim guide, he recommends the following sensitivity ranges. If you want to focus on tracking, you're looking at a 20 to 25 centimeter per 300 degree sensitivity, meaning that it takes you 20 to 25 centimeters of mouse pad to turn 360 degrees. If you instead lean towards flicking and click timing, Aimer suggests a range over 30 centimeters, and if you want a balance, you are looking at a range between 21 centimeters to 27 per 360. But keep in mind, this is all a recommendation and purely subjective as I have a range of about 42 centimeters for 360 degrees and I do just fine. That being said, some notable creators that are on this sensitivity range would be It's Timmy at 21 centimeters per 360, ACU at 29 centimeters per 360, and Fade at 30 and a half centimeters per 360. These are all traditionally movement, quick flicks, wraith players. When looking at professional Apex players, they're usually leaning towards the lower sensitivities with players such as Imperial Hal at 52 centimeters per 360, Sweet Dreams at 37 centimeters per 360, and Hardecky at 43. Now it's worth noting that almost every high tier player didn't start with Apex Legends as their first competitive game and they have their own personal stories to their own sensitivities, usually based on what game they played beforehand. Many of these coming from Counter-Strike or Overwatch, but I digress. Going through the list, I found some odd players in the higher sensitivity among pros, reinforcing that this is all really personal preference. But people usually adopt the sensitivity to go with their role or their playstyle. If you find yourself having to flick and look around a lot, you might end up with a higher sensitivity, and if you favor high precision aim and you're usually looking in the right direction, you might be more inclined to run a lower sensitivity. But odds are you're not here to copy someone else's settings, you're here so you can find your own natural, pure sensitivity. Here's what you do. Jump into Apex and load into the Fang range. Start flicking between the dummies and make note of where your crosshair lands. If you over flick and go too far consistently, you should lower your sensitivity. If you happen to under flick and not really reach your target in time, raise it. This is the starting point in finding your natural sensitivity. Make sure that your sensitivity also allows you to turn around in one full swipe. This is very important in a game such as Apex because you oftentimes will find yourself needing to make a quick 180 turn. If it takes more than one large swipe, you're usually dead before you can react. This is the complete opposite of slow-paced tactical shooter games such as Counter-Strike or Valorant, where you are more often than not already aiming at the correct angle, and whether you get the kill or not depends on pixel precision. So once again, make sure that your sensitivity allows you to turn around. Some people also don't have access to a large enough mouse pads or have enough disk space, which is why this next piece of advice is crucial. Make sure that you are able to actually turn around between 180 degrees to a full 360 degrees in one swipe. Personally, I can turn a little under 360 degrees, about 280, going from a full swipe left to right. And this allows me to quickly spin around if someone engages me from behind. This is also crucial to keep in mind when setting up a sensitivity if you have limited space, as otherwise you'll simply die if you're caught looking the wrong way. Anecdotally, going past 360 degrees in one full swipe is too high of a sensitivity, and so far everyone that I've asked about this, I agree. Moving on, you also want to make sure that you can track a target smoothly without your aim shaking or jittering. 
If your aim is jittering, it means that your sensitivity is too high to consistently do smooth micro movements. And in a game like Apex, being fast is important, but precision is key. What's the point of turning around if you can't hit what you're reacting to? Finding the balance between these three points will take time and it might even need you to try the sensitivity out in game. That perfect sensitivity is a combination of all of the three. Where you can consistently flick to targets without under overshooting, where you can swing around on a dime and at the same time smoothly track at any range if needed. If you try this out, I'm curious to hear what sensitivity you had before applying these keys and what sensitivity you ended up with. Let me know in the comments. I usually get the question, what's the difference between DPI and sensitivity? Which one should I increase first? Let me answer that question by quickly hashing out these two different units to measure sensitivity. We have the age-old eDPI, which means effective DPI, and we have the centimeter per 360. eDPI is the quick go-to way to compare two different sensitivities within the same game, seeing as they all follow the same formula. eDPI scales, and that means that a sensitivity of 2.0 with a DPI of 400 is the same as a sensitivity of 1.0, but with the DPI cranked to 800. Centimeters by 360 instead measures how many centimeters, or inches, it takes for you to do a full 360 degree turn in your game of choice, which then can be translated into another game of choosing. The reason I'm making this distinction is because people are nitpicky. There are handy converters online to help you make the switch. I'll link to one in the description. Shifting our focus back to eDPI, it might seem like it doesn't really matter whether you tune your DPI or if you tune your in-game sensitivity, but there is a ratio. Ideally, you want to make sure that your mouse feels about the same in-game as when you're on your desktop, since you want to make roughly the same movements in-game as when you're doing other things than playing your game on your computer. This means that if you mainly use your arm to aim when you're playing the game, find a sensitivity slash DPI ratio where you use your arm to maneuver the desktop. If you use your wrist, find one where your cursor moves fast for you to move across the desktop. I'd recommend setting your sensitivity to where moving your cursor from the left to right edge of your screen is identical to a full 180 degree swipe in game. If you do this, make sure that you also turn off your enhanced pointer precision in the window setting so that the mouse movement remains consistent. In the context of Apex, this will also help you with looting, a more in-depth guide I'll release at a later date and will be available on the screen right now once I have set it up. People crack a lot of jokes about pros being peculiar about their setup, but consistently performing and consistently improving relies on consistency in every aspect, and that includes how they're set up. Reflect on your posture, how far your stomach is from the desk, your hand position on the desk, mouse pad, desk height, monitor height, and everything else regarding how you sit and play. Try to keep this as consistent as possible for every gaming session. It's pretty daunting, but after some time it actually will feel off if you don't sit the way that you conditioned yourself to. This allows you to become more consistent and build on your muscle memory. And for better or worse, if you play on some other guy's computer, you will definitely notice if you're not sitting the way you should. And that's it, but even though you found your natural sensitivity, it does not mean that you're suddenly ace you. Once you figured out what sensitivity your body is the most inclined to use, now's the time to improve on it. Thankfully, I've made a guide covering everything that goes into aim training, and that video is available on the screen right now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.